Great, so now we are starting the feature extraction and supervised algorithm. Again, high levels, the beds, beds I view on these algorithms. Um, what feature extraction is trying to do is, is it, it is trying to learn new representations. That's what we are trying to do. We are trying to learn new representations. Uh, representations of the original data set of the OG data set, right? Of the OG, OG features. Let me just say of the OG features. Uh, in in our data in our data or to extract new features or new representations of those features right so which means feature extraction can be used you can use it to reduce the number of features reduce number of features you can use this to reduce the number of features from the original number that we had in the original data set to a smaller a smaller set and this is effectively dimension reduction we can use this we can use the algorithms here to do dimension reduction or we can use them to generate new features to generate new features well new feature representations to help with our machine learning machine learning model let's say a supervised machine learning model so which algorithms are we going to discuss we're going to discuss auto encoders if you are, if you are in, I would, I, would, I, would, I would assume that if you're doing unsupervised learning course like this one, you've probably been exposed to machine learning, especially supervised. Supervised, I would say it is the easier part. I'm just putting easier in quotes, but that's you, that's where everyone starts. And then as you mature, you then start getting to unsupervised learning because it's a bit tougher. It's a bit tougher. And... The reason why I'm emphasizing that um, I'm pretty sure that many of you have have um, have done no machine learning is because you've come across this word called auto encoders. You would have come across this word auto encoders. What they are? These auto encoders, they are used to generate new feature representations. Well, how do we do that? We use a feed-forward non-recurrent neural network to perform the learning, the representation learning. Where the number of nodes in the input layer equals the number of nodes in the output layer, and we have uh, some layers in between, right? So let let me see if I can paste if the image will come from the internet that I was in. Oh, okay, it's coming out like this. Ooh, that's a bit of a problem because it's not covering everything. I didn't want it to cover everything. Um, because now, if it covers everything, then we won't be able to see. But okay, let me just use this. I hope you can see still. So this is the input layer. This is the input layer. This is the input layer. And then these are in, in between here. We have our, we have our. Um, okay, let me let me see if I can find if I can find um, a better image than this one here. Okay. See, I'm, I'm actually looking. I was looking for an auto encoder image, but I think we can use this one here. Okay, let's try this one. So let's copy this. Hopefully, it is not as large as the the other one. Oh no, it probably is as well. Hmm. Okay, we count our losses because I'm not quite sure with this software how to. I haven't really learned how to how to do let's say if it's how to do a zoom in or a zoom out or to minimize the or to reduce the size of the image but anyway let's just let's just work with what we what we have so you see here this this is the input input layer it is these many these many um inputs one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right so the input layer will they have the same as the output layer if you can see on this side the output layer i know it's cut you can't really see because it's cut now but the output layer is on this side this is the output layer hopefully in upcoming videos when this happens again i would have i would have learned how to minimize how to reduce the sizes and stuff like of things that i paste in 
So this is the output layer, right? But let me see. Let's see if if I paste it and I enlarge the the canvas. Yes, I think that will work better. So this is the input layer. This is the input layer. And the input layer, and then this is going to be the output layer. So I think now you can see it a bit, bit better. Cool. So what happens here with this with this auto encoder is it's a feed forward. It's a feed forward. Non recurrent. Very very important that it doesn't recur because recurrent neural networks they send information back and forth and stuff. That sucks. Um, neural network. right so when it's like this what happens then is each hidden layer these are hidden layers right our data comes in through there each hidden layer of the auto, auto encoder it learns a representation of the original features and subsequent layers build on top of what the previous layer would have learned so this layer builds on top of what represent of a representation that this layer Learned. So this first layer here, this first hidden layer, it then takes in, so this first layer, it takes in the input, right? Takes the input features, lends, a, lends its own representation of these inputs, input features, right? And this layer takes, takes what the first layer has learned, creates its own representations, and this part here also does the same, also does the same for the encoding part right and then for the decoding part for the decoding part we're going to get into the detail when you get to you uh, auto encoders in a f upcoming chapter for the decoding part this decoder part tries to replicate now what it's trying to do is to create an output that is similar to the input so it's saying oh this is the representation that, that i have now how do i unpack that it unpacks it this layer unpacks it as much as it can and then this layer unpacks it as well as much as it can and then at the end it should it should represent it should represent what was fed into it so that's the auto encoder so what is important is each hidden layer of the auto encoder lends a representation of the original features and subsequent layers build on the representation learned by the preceding layer layer by layer the auto encoder lends increasingly complex representation from simpler ones if you have ever used a convolutional neural network I'm now talking about image recognition and stuff like that, but it's the same sort of like principle. In a convolutional neural network or a CNN, the first layers, they learn high level details. They learn, let's say it's a human, human face. They learn that there's a line here, there's an X here, there's a V here. There's a, so high level details until and the, 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 the layers that are now more deep into the network, they learn now more deeper deeper um, representations so like this is an eye this is a this is the nose this is the mouth and, and and right at the end it recognizes that this is a face but at the beginning here they're noticing maybe like lines like there's a line here there's another line that goes like this there's a v that does that you know to create like a face you know what i mean so that's the same thing where it says um subsequent layers build on representations learned by preceding layers and layer by layer the auto encoder learns increasingly complex representations of from the simpler one going like that the output layer is finally is is the final new newly represent newly learned representation of the original data set so if you want to perform dimensional reduction you make sure that the output layer the one the layer that you're going to use as the output will have fewer fewer nodes than the in input here we're 10 you make sure that the output whatever output you are going to use but let's say this is going to be your output there are sometimes there are some use cases where we are going to see that we are going to cut the auto encoder here and make this our output so in that output we have three instead of 10 we've done a bit of dimension dimension reduction or if you want to create new features what you can do is these these ones here if i add if i add another out a node here it's going to add a different representation it's going to create a new feature sort of from its representation to fit that 11. so i've created a different representation it's not going to be the same output the input the same features that we had here it's a representation a different representation of the input that we had and i created so like new features here created new features 
when you got to the output. So this learned representation can then be used as an input, like this one that you have learned here. Wait, wait, outputs. It can be used as an input in a supervised learning model. Hopefully, to improve its error, to improve the supervised learning model's error. So that is the that is what an auto encoder is. We are going to see all this. Don't worry. I hope it's getting you excited because we are going to learn all this um, in, the, in 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 this course. So let's look at B. B is not not difficult. It's just a supervised supervised uh, training. It's supervised training of a feed, a just a normal feed forward, a normal feed forward network, neural network, neural network, and it has to be non recurrent as well. Feed forward non recurrent neural network. So let's say we have a few examples in our data set. We have a couple of examples. In our examples, what we can do is we can use a feed-forward non-recurrent neural network where the output layer attempts to predict the label. So the output layer attempts to predict the label. You know, a, a normal neural network, we just have those. Um, we, have, we, we have things like this, right? Just, just going to try... Um, because we have to connect everything like that. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just putting lines, but they could be wrong and stuff, so I don't mind. So let's say this is the output layer. The output layer, we have we have data set with labels. So if, if you train it like you train a normal neural network. If labels, you put in your data, you do the fine-tuning, it does the fine-tuning using using some optimizer and, uh, and, um, and a, a metric that you're tracking there, it optimizes trying to predict the what? The labels. What's your training that you are tuning the what? You are tuning the, you are tuning the, the model. What's your training the neural network? The neural network. It is tuning itself to better represent the data set, or to extract the features in the data set, or to extract the representation, extract a representation of the data set. When your metric is good enough, when it is fine tuned enough, and you are happy, let's say with the accuracy measure. What you can then do is to cut the neural network here. And then when you cut the neural network there, you get all these layers before it. You get all these layers before it. Especially if you get this, the output of the layer that was before the original output layer. So when you get the output of this, you have learned a new representation. This gives you the representation. Because that was the representation just before it predicted or something that's before its output layer just before its output layer and just like we did with auto encoders each hidden layer lends a representation of the of the original features this network it is guided it is guided explicitly by these labels and it tunes itself tunes, tunes itself by when it's generating the new representations that will match the labels so now we expect extract the final representation of the original features by extracting the, the hidden layer just before the output. So we discard the output layer and we, we keep this one here. We keep the, um, the one before it, which is called the pre, I think it's called the pre-nuptial, pre ultimate uh, pre-nuptimate, not pre-nuptial, pre-nuptimate, pre pre-nuptimate layer. It is the layer just before the output. And then this this is what we are going to use because now this is representing our data set and it is representing it well because it was guided by labels. So it's representing it well. We take this and then we feed it to a supervised learning model. Supervised learning model down the line there. That's what we do. So that is another way of uh, extracting or feature extraction. So we've done feature extraction in this video. What we are going to do in the next video is we are going to look at um let's see what are we i think we're going to look at um anomaly detection i think that is it anomaly detection yeah we're going to look at anomaly detection and when we do anomaly detection we would have covered everything in this first chapter we've covered everything in this chapter and then we'll, in the next video i'm going to discuss the next chapter that we'll be doing so stay tuned for that one